that can orbit the Earth and attack people at will. And there are many, many space planes that are under development from this prompt global strike plan. Uh, last year, on April 22nd, two separate tests took place on the same day. One took place with a thing called HTV-2, which was just like a, a little quick strike weapon that was launched by an agency called DARPA. And that was launched and fell right to Earth. But on the same day, the Air Force launched what is a very, very secret robot version of the space shuttle called the X-37B. And they did not say what the X-37B was used for, but it launched and it never came down. And it never came down. And finally it came down in November 2010. And there is thinking that this is a combination surveillance and attack plane that will be orbiting the Earth at all times. And earlier this year, in March, a second X-37B airplane, space plane, went up. Now we hear every day about the end of the space shuttle and the end of the NASA mission in space, but we hear nothing about the robot space shuttle and the fact that this robot space shuttle is orbiting the Earth today. We think that the plan is to always have one of these X-37B robot shuttles orbiting the Earth at all times. And as soon as one has to land because of perhaps having worn out components, that another one will be launched within a month. But we really don't know anything about what they are used for. Now, if we turn to the next slide, yep. this slide is meant to be a little uh, humorous or sarcastic because, you know, uh, President Obama made a big deal about signing the START Accord um, uh, last year and that this is going to finally lead to the end of nuclear weapons. But almost on the same day that that was signed, uh, he gave his approval for the START of Prompt Global Strike, PGS. Uh, there are many in the news uh, journalism community, uh, Noah Schachtman of Wired Magazine and Rachel Maddow and other people, who believe that this was a direct deal with the military, that the military said, we will support nuclear reduction if and only if you support Prompt Global Strike. And that appears to be what the deal is. And we can look at the next play. Yes. But here's the problem. We talk about, you know, the end of nuclear weapons because of prompt global strike. But the strategic nuclear weapons that are still around, the land-based missiles, the submarine missiles, the cruise missiles, they now are under the control of the Global Strike Command. Global Strike Command directs both prompt Global Strike, which does not use nuclear missiles, and the U.S. nuclear forces. And uh, one, one woman who has been very active in anti-nuclear work, Jackie Cabasso, she was watching the latest launches from Vandenberg Air Force Base a few months ago, and the general of the Global Strike Command was there. And she said, well, he didn't talk a bit about nuclear weapons for deterrence. He talked about nuclear weapons to be war-fighting elements of the global strike. And I said, Jackie, that is now what the Global Strike Command sees. It does not see all of the deterrence of all the many years of the Cold War. It sees nuclear weapons as part of global strike. And so that is the new reality we are working with. So uh, we can go to the next foil here. Yeah. I talked I talked a little bit about the key roles played by uh, facilities like Vardu and Fasca in Norway and about uh, Buckley Field in Colorado and Menwith Hill in England. This is a picture of Menwith Hill, all the big golf balls there. And these are managed by two secret agencies of the United States that are much, much bigger than the CIA. They are the National Security Agency, NSA, which listens to everything, 
and the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO, which launches secret satellites into space. The two of them use these facilities to allow for perfect mapping and perfect intelligence of the Earth so that missions like Plump Global Strike can be accomplished. And we are seeing more and more uh, specialized facilities for this kind of intelligence collection arising. There is now a gargantuan building in the state of Utah in the United States called Storage Station Freedom that is storing all the information from people's phone calls and emails so that we have as perfect an image as possible of everything that is going on on the planet. And tied into all of this is the new work of the Cyber Command. And now we can go to the next foil here. I mentioned before that um, there was a joint project of Israel and the United States uh, called Stuxnet. And it was intended to deliver a very special computer bug that uh, would go straight into the Iranian uranium enrichment facility. And this is going to be the model for how future operations of the Cyber Command are planned. They will develop very specific, specific attack tools for computers. But as was the case with Iran, with its power plants, a lot of these attack tools can go wrong. And here is one area where I am a little bit concerned about where individual people are going. And I will show you this in the next slide. So if we can go to the next slide. Now, you have maybe heard quite a bit about the computer warfare carried out by individual hackers. And some of them have names like Anonymous and LulzSec and all these groups. And some of their attacks are very interesting like trying to go against the companies that uh, harmed WikiLeaks people. And some of them get to be kind of crazy. We had a group called LulzSec that started out by planting false stories about Tupac Shakur in uh, media sites. But within four weeks, it had gone up to attack the CIA uh, main database. Now, here is the problem I have with these individual hackers. One of the first major hackers of the Internet, Robert Morris Jr., was the son of one of the major scientists at the National Security Agency, Robert Morris Sr., who just died a couple weeks ago. Robert Morris Jr. was arrested in the late 1980s uh, for letting loose a worm on the Internet, and he was originally offered a deal to get out of jail by coming to work for the NSA. And this is something that goes on all the time. Hackers begin to work for the NSA, begin to work for the FBI, until we can no longer tell who is working for what. There have been stories of many attacks on the U.S. from China, but there is a feeling that many of these attacks do not come from the Chinese government. They come from individuals in China who want China to have a more aggressive posture against the United States than it does. And so what I am saying here is giving a warning. If you choose to be a hacker that for anarchist reasons or just for you know disruptive purposes wants to get involved in computer attack, it is very, very hard to know when you might be doing the government's bidding, either willingly or unwillingly. Uh, now, if we want to move to the uh, next slide, I am just going to make a very brief mention of missile defense here because of the fact that missile defense is part and parcel of this whole prompt global strike thing. So we hear that uh, Obama is not as much into missile defense anymore, but there are still all of these Navy ships, EDA ships going all around the world. There are still facilities that go right up against the Russian border uh, in Turkey and elsewhere. And missile defense 
is only used partially against small missiles from nations like Iran.